Well, good morning, and again, welcome to Latham Bible Baptist Church and Latham Christian Academy. Uh, it certainly has been our privilege throughout this year uh, for your children to be a part of our ministry here in the K-3 program, and I'm glad you made time to come out. I know for many of you this is time off of work and uh, time away from other responsibilities, but we appreciate it, and I know the children are eager to come in. Um, so let's have a word of prayer, and then we will get started with our program today. Let's pray. Our dear Lord, thank you so much for these children that you have brought to our academy this year. Lord, thank you for the potential that they have of service for you. And Lord, we ask that uh, they would grow in that nurture and admonition and be more like you each day. Lord, we pray for your blessings in their lives over the summer. Uh, Lord, that you would watch over them, keep them safe. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would continue developing and growing inside of them as they uh, learned more about you each day. Lord, we pray this program today would go smoothly that you would help Mrs. Mansfield and Mrs. Haddon as they work with the children even today. And Lord, we pray that you would be honored in our fellowship time at the end. Uh, Lord, may all of this be done for your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before we begin, just a couple of quick notes about how this is going to work. Of course, we're a relatively small group here, uh, smaller than some of our other programs where we fill just about every seat in here. But I would still just ask if you could help us out um, staying seated during the program. Um, your, if your children see you get up, they may come running to you. And that's going to cause a problem. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, stay seated. Enjoy the program. Um, a couple of things. We are creating a video um, that we will be giving you a copy of. Also, we have one of our illustrious graduates here from uh, last year. Andrew Coonrod was on the yearbook staff uh, last school year here at our high school. And he will be taking pictures. You'll get a copy of all of those. So we are it's just as part of the report card when you come to pick it up. Uh, we'll have those along with many of the pictures that you have seen up here. Uh, we'll give you digital copies of those so you can do whatever you want with them at that point. Uh, but we want you to have that. Uh, and we want you to be able to enjoy the program today without feeling like you have to get up and get pictures every time something happens. Now, that said, we are going to have an opportunity with the kids in costume for you to come up and take a picture at the end after they do their little program. Uh, we'll have a quick we'll have a quick timeout and, and invite you to not come up on the platform, please, because that'll, again, we'll lose them. But come up around the platform and come and take pictures. Um, or you certainly, uh, and at the, again, at the end, we'll give you another quick opportunity at the very end to do the same thing. So we trust you'll, um, you'll enjoy the program today. Mrs. Mansfield, it's all yours. When Jesus lived here on earth, he told stories. He told these stories to help the people understand a lesson he was trying to teach them. Here is a story he told to mothers and fathers and boys and girls just like you a very, very long time ago. Once there was a shepherd who took care of 100 sheep. Each sheep had a name. And when the shepherd talked to them, he would call each by their name. Every morning, the good shepherd took his sheep to the pasture to find fresh green grass to eat and clear, cool water to drink. He protected them from wild animals and made sure his sheep were always safe. He loved his sheep very, very much. One day, a little lamb did not want to obey the good shepherd she thought it would be more fun to go off by herself and do whatever she wanted to do. Little by little, she moved away from the rest of the sheep and the good shepherd. Pretty soon, she was running and jumping and playing and having the best time ever, 
when all of a sudden she stopped. She looked around. She couldn't see the other sheep anymore. She couldn't see her good shepherd, and she realized she was lost. She got so scared, she started running, and she ran right into a thorn bush and got stuck. Meanwhile, the end of the day had come, and the good shepherd took the rest of his sheep home. As he was counting his sheep and putting them back in the sheepfold, he realized all of his sheep were not there. There was one sheep missing. I must find my little lamb, the shepherd said. And he went back out into the fields to look for his sheep. He looked and looked and looked. He called, little lamb, little lamb, where are you? And finally he heard her crying. Bah! He went and got his little lamb from the thorn bush and took her back home. The good shepherd was so happy to have his little lamb back home with him. God loves every one of us as a shepherd loves his sheep. When one of us sins or does something wrong, it is like a sheep that has gone astray. And God is very sad. But when the person turns away from the bad things they have done and comes back to God, God is very, very happy, like a shepherd who has found his lost sheep. Everybody have the pictures you want for this? All right, we'll give you another opportunity at the very end, but they're going to take their little costumes off for now.
is true. Oh, who can make the raindrops? I'm sure I can't, can you? Oh, who can make the raindrops? No one but God is true. Oh, who can make the sunshine? I'm sure I can't, can you? Me. 
just wanted to close with a, a couple of verses from God's Word this morning. And uh, there was a time in Paul's life when he was ministering and serving God, and he ended up in the city of Athens in Greece. Have any of you ever been to Athens? I've been to Athens about three times, and I have been on this hill that's mentioned here. It's called Mars Hill, and it's right in the center part of Athens, Greece. From Mars Hill, you can turn around, and right behind you is the Acropolis. And then you look down over the hill, and you see the Agora, which is the marketplace. And so this was a very special place right in the center of the city. 
Mars Hill. It's just a big, open, um, bare rock. <laughs> and, and so I've been up on this hill on several occasions. And Paul, when he was there, said these words. It says, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. See, they were covering all their bases, right? They wanted to make sure they, they had an altar to all of the known gods, but just in case they missed one, they had one to the unknown God. And so then Paul said, um, This unknown God, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And then it says in verse 28, For in him we live and move and have our being. Uh, Paul was preaching to them the one true God, and he was unknown to them. And, uh, you know, he, he presented this unknown God to them as the God who created all. He presented him as the God through whom we have life. Um, I have life today. Why? Because of God. And uh, it says, we move. Um, I'm able to get around today. Why? Because of God. And uh, verse 3 says, And have our being. I am. Why am I here today? Why am I a being? Because of God. And, uh, and then this same one talked about that God coming in human flesh and being here on this earth and living a perfect sinless life and eventually dying and shedding his blood so that mankind who was sinful could know the forgiveness of sins. Just a little while before this, Paul was in a prison. Uh, he was in a prison and, uh, and God did a miracle and made an earthquake, and the prison doors opened, and, and Paul's chains fell off, and, and the, the jailer was about ready to commit suicide because the prisoners had been freed. And Paul stopped him and said, we're all here. And because Paul had been singing and praying and testifying all through the night, the jailer had an important question. The jailer said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? You know what he said? The same one that he presented just a short while later in Mars Hill as, as the unknown God to the, to the Athenians, he said, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Because it was Jesus who had come and who had paid sin's debt and had set men free from the curse of sin and the way we avail ourselves of that life in Christ is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the same God that Paul was presenting to the Athenians who had an altar to the unknown God but now he was telling them who that unknown God was. I pray and, and hope that every one of us here knows personally that God, the one in whom 